think a tarp is the one thing that really makes my van feel at home. It's everything from privacy to shelter from the sun, the wind, the rain, snow sometimes. Oh, cheers, guys. Without a tarp, my van just feels like a vehicle just kind of parked in the middle of nowhere. Once I have the tarp set up, it really feels like home. I feel way less vulnerable. Hey, what's up guys, it's Kodak. I've had a lot of requests for this video, so I really hope it helps. All right, so step number one is anchoring a corner of the tarp to the van, if you can. If you can't, you'll have to use a pole or just kind of make do, like maybe you run a guy line over top of the van and stake it in or tie it to a fender or a wheel well, something like that. For me, I'm using my bike rack on the roof rack and to attach it, I'm using what's called a toggle, which means I'm taking this loop, passing it through, and then just using that stick to hold it in place. But here, let's show you a toggle up close. If your tarp doesn't have loops built onto it, you can just obviously make your own, especially if you need to go around something that's thicker than what you have. For me, this is like the perfect diameter. It fits absolutely perfectly. Step two is anchoring the next corner of your tarp. I like to set this one next so I can get that position correct with the corner of my van. All right, now we wanna pull out this next corner and then we'll set up our main pole. You can see how I'm pitching it kind of loose right now. That way we can get that pole up in the air and then we'll come through and kind of fine tune and tweak everything. Now we have like the main kind of shape of the tarp. So now we're gonna pull out this center here to give us a bunch more headroom in the middle there. Just got a length of cord tied to this. Pop that on. All right, now this is the important part. Once you have the tarp kind of up in the air and like loosely pitched, you wanna look and evaluate it. And you can see where your tension is and where you don't have tension. And what you're looking for is just like a nice symmetry. You want a nice line to that guy out, to that guy out, a nice V shape to it. Nice V here, a V there. And on this back line, since we're pulling it out here, you kind of want to keep this edge looser. That way your main tension runs like through the middle of the tarp in an X shape. So in this case, I'm gonna go tighten this guy line here and we can see it's a little bit saggy up there, which means that that one will need tightened too. So actually once I tighten this one, that might be enough to fix it, but we'll see. first couple times you set up a tarp it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt and it might be kind of wonky take it down start from scratch and just keep trying a few times it's just gonna take a little bit of practice and 
eventually you'll get it. It's really not that hard. It's pretty simple. This guy line here, you don't want it to be tight. This isn't like your main attachment point. You want your like main lines to run from the corners and then any other guy lines you set are just kind of secondary. So you definitely want there to be like some give to them. You don't want that to like take the main brunt of all that tension. These just play a supporting role. So this just kind of helps if the wind comes in this way, it just helps support it and take some of the pressure off these lines. All right, so there's two main knots that you wanna know. One is the bow line, and that'll be your kind of loop that you use for attaching to like the corners of your tarp and maybe like anchoring around a stake. The second knot is called the trucker's hitch and you're gonna use that in place of the like little sliders. I can't think of what those tensioners are called. So for the bow line, pretty easy. I've been tying these for years. I did this for like tree work so I can tie these in my sleep, but it's just like around and back through the hole and boom, you're done. It's a knot that you can tie one-handed, which is super useful when you're doing tree work and you're like hanging by like one hand, holding on, holding chainsaws and stuff like that. I think the old adage for this one is that the rabbit goes through his hole, around the tree, and back into his hole. Rabbit, through his hole, around the tree and back into his hole. Bowlin. All right, so we have a bowlin that's anchored to the tarp itself. That's what goes through the guy line or the length of cord. Now, your line comes down and around your stake. All right, so we start by making a little loop in the line, passing the bottom end through it now we have this little slider knot. You see this little sliding knot around the stake. Now the bottom end here comes back and through that sliding knot. Now you can see you can tighten and tension that. And to finish this knot off, we're just going to come around and in, like that. Now you can just and it's all undone. Make a loop in the line. Loop in the line. Pass this through. And that's just an overhand knot tied on a bite, which means a loop of line. Overhand knot tied on a bite. Around the stake. Through that loop that we just made. Tighten, and now take another bite or piece of line and tie another overhand knot to secure and lock it off. Boom, now it's tightened off. To undo the knot, just pull on that free end, pow, and the whole thing comes free. To get this knot out, just pull. Your imagination is the limit when it comes to pitching the tarp. You're only limited by the number of guy lines and the number of pulls that you have. And even then, you can, I mean, guy lines are kind of hard to make, but most people have like paracord or some kind of rope lying around. But you can always get like a stick or really kind of anything, trekking poles, to use to like prop up another part of the tarp. But you can configure these things any way that you want, whatever's gonna work for you and whatever's gonna work for the conditions. If it's rainy or whatever, you're gonna want a nice roof and you're gonna kind of want to make sure that one side is higher than the other so that the water flows off it nicely and doesn't pull in the middle, which could cause the whole tarp to cave in, which isn't good. You don't want water to pull on your tarp. And 
All right, I'm nervous. Oh, that was terrible. I'm so embarrassed. So embarrassed. There's like a bunch of people around and here I am like almost, I'm not quite talking to myself. I'm talking to like you guys technically, you know, but right now, right here, it's me and a camera. And that feels a little strange sometimes. I'm still getting used to this, so. Yep, such is life, say la vie. But there we go, the sun's setting, it's gorgeous here. I, I love it down here. Arizona this time of year is like the place to be.